Nobody has done this for grease pencil, so here it is. All the 26 grease pencil modifiers in Blender 3.4. This is the long detailed version. If you just want to know what each modifier can do and which ones may be useful to you, find the short version on the top right corner or in the description. In the description you will also find a link to a pack with some files I'm using in this tutorial on Gumroad. It's free but donations are welcome of course. A link to buy me a coffee and links to various videos that can help you understand the grease pencil modifiers better and learn about advanced effects and animations with modifiers. I gave each video a code V1, V2, V3 etc to help you navigate to them quickly. This content was hard to collect, organize, make sense of and simplify to be grasped by normal people. It consists of two main videos and a dozen of supporting videos to help you understand every aspect and dark feature of the grease pencil modifiers. It can benefit a lot of people so please share it with the world. So let's start with the common stuff. First, what are modifiers? They are operation containers that can be added to your grease pencil object from the modifier properties panel. Modifiers allow making various non-destructive changes to your grease pencil object, which means that they alter your strokes in viewports and renders but don't mess with the actual drawing. So there is the possibility to apply the modifier effects permanently to the stroke using this button, or if it's an animation to bake them by going to Object Animation Bake Object Transform to Grease Pencil. The baking can help you take animation with modifiers to the next level as explained in V1. Modifier Stacks Modifiers can be stacked to create complex and sometimes non-predictable effects like this awesome alien text generator you can learn to make in V2. The order in which your modifiers are applied to your object is very important, that's why it is possible to reorder modifiers inside your stack. Keyframing most of the settings in modifiers can be keyframed to create more or less complex animated effects. The possibilities are limitless. Influence settings. Before we dive into each modifier, these are the common settings that a lot of them share. They allow you to choose the parts affected by your modifier. You can choose a layer or if you activate the inverse button exclude that layer. You can choose a material or exclude it in the same fashion. You can choose or exclude a vertex group. Weight can be assigned manually to this group or generated using some of the modifiers we will see. Watch V3 if you have no idea what vertex groups and weight are. In some modifiers there's a weighted button next to some settings values. Enabling it discards the value and tells the modifier to instead purely use the vertex group's weight. You can choose a pass index for layers or materials and this will allow you to include or exclude multiple layers or materials at once. You can add a pass index to a layer in the object data properties panel and the relations. And you can add it to a material in the material properties panel and their settings. Learn in V4 how and why you may want to use and keyframe pass indexes. Finally we have custom curves that allow you to change how the modifier's effect is applied along your stroke. This is an example using the thickness modifier. Texture Mapping This modifier controls location, scale and rotation of textures and gradients in materials. In this example we have two strokes with a texture stroke material and line type, one stroke with a texture stroke material and square type, one stroke with a texture fill material and we can also use a gradient fill. The modes in the texture mapping modifier can be stroke, fill or both, which is self-explanatory. We will use both to see all the settings at once. The first stroke setting is the fit method. Constant means that the texture length will be the same in all strokes. Stroke means that the texture length will depend on the stroke length, as seen in these two strokes with different lengths. UV offset will change the texture position in a line. Rotation rotates a single texture unit and works only with lines of type dots or squares. Scale scales the length of the texture, not the thickness of the line. 
Note that all these settings except rotation don't work with strokes with type dots or squares, since in these the texture is linked to single vertices and can only be edited by editing those vertices. The fill settings start with rotation which rotates the texture or gradient fill, offset X and Y to play with the fill's position, scale which scales the fill. See V5 by Open Class for some cool animations you can do with this modifier. Time Offset This allows you to offset the position of your grease pencil frames in the timeline, to change animation speed and direction, and to loop your animations. Regular mode offsets animation in the normal direction. Reverse reverses the playback. Fixed frame freezes the animation in one frame that you can choose here. This can be keyframed and allows you to switch between different mouth shapes for example. Ping pong mode plays the animation forth then back. Chain mode allows stacking segments with different modes and settings. Repeat sets the number of loops of each segment. In V6 I explain how I use this mode to stack, loop and transition dance moves. The frame offset setting sets the number of frames by which to offset the animation. Scale changes the animation speed. More than one is faster and less is slower. Keep loop when enabled loops the animation forever. Custom range restricts playback to a certain frame range and enabling it is required for the ping pong mode to work properly. Frame offset and scale allow creating animation variation if you have clones of the same object, as explained by Daniel Martinez in V7. Vertex Weight Angle This is one of the modifiers that generate weight. This one does it based on the angle of the stroke. It doesn't work alone, but along with other modifiers that support vertex groups. Here we will use the tint modifier as an example, so let's add one. In vertex group, enter a group from the same object. Enter the same group and their influence in the tint modifier. The invert button here inverts the weight and so the tint effect. It works the same here or here. Here you choose your angle. Here you choose the rotation axis. Y is the only one that works in this 2D plane, but if you draw in 3D space you may need X or Z. The local axis of your object can be different than the world axis, so here you can choose either. Minimum is if you want the generated weight to start from zero or a value you choose here. Multiply if enabled mixes the existent weight of the stroke with the generated weights by multiplying them with each other. This is the weight I painted in my circle and this is how it mixes with the generated weight. Vertex Weight Proximity Generates weight based on the distance between your grease pencil object and another object you choose. It doesn't work alone but along with modifiers that support vertex groups. This time we'll use the thickness modifier as an example, so let's add one and add some thickness. In vertex group enter a group from the same object. Enter the same group and their influence in the thickness modifier. In target object we will use an empty. Lowest and highest means the distance at which the weight is lowest and the one at which it's highest. Let's change highest to 0.5 meters to see the effect clearly. The closer these values are to each other the sharper the effect is and vice versa. The invert button, minimum and multiply work similar to the vertex weight angle modifier we just saw. In V8, Alice makes some advanced animations with drivers using the weight proximity modifier. Array Creates duplicates of the grease pencil object and allows arranging them in various ways. Count is the number of duplicates. Material override allows choosing a custom material for the duplicates. Zero uses all the default object materials. One uses the first material listed in the material properties panel, etc. Relative offset uses the size of the object to determine the distance between the instances. While constant uses fixed distance values. Object Offset uses a separate object you choose here. 
In addition to location, manipulating this object also allows you to control rotation and scale. Learn in depth about these mods in V9 and make these cool spiraling stairs. Randomize randomizes location, rotation and scale. Enabling uniform scale will apply the same seed to the X, Y and Z axis, keeping them uniform. I know this can be confusing to normal people like us who are not developers, so I'll try to explain it in V10. Changing the seed will give you different random. Build. Creates the effect of your strokes being drawn or erased. The sequential mod draws or erases strokes one after the other, if they are on the same layer. Concurrent mod animates them all at once. With time alignment you can choose to make strokes of different lengths start animating at once and end in different times, or start on a different time and end together. Additive mode works when you have multiple grease pencil frames. On each frame it draws only the strokes that didn't exist in the previous frame. Learn to use additive mode in V11. Transition modes are Grow, which draws strokes from start to end. Shrink, which erases the strokes starting from the end. It's the opposite of grow. Vanish erases the strokes starting from the start. Start delay is to change the animation starting point. Frames decides the maximum length of the animation in frames. If the next frame is closer than the number entered here, the animation will be faster. Enabling factor will turn the modifier to manual mode, allowing you to choose how much of the stroke is visible. The position of the object you enter here will decide the starting point of the building animation. It adds a lot of flexibility to this modifier. Learn to use it in V12. Custom range makes the modifier's effects active only on the specified range. The fade fades the stroke in or out while it's growing or shrinking. Factor is how much of the stroke is used for the fading effect. Thickness fades the stroke by lowering its thickness. Opacity fades it by lowering its opacity. Weight output is a weight generator that allows you to combine fade with other modifiers. V12 will also teach you about fade and weight output while growing some grease pencil plants. Dot dash. This will split your stroke to dots or dashes. The offset changes where they are placed on the stroke. The segment section allows you to combine dashes that have different settings and materials. Dash. One is a dot. More is a dash. Gap. The gap between dashes can be zero or more. Radius is the thickness of the segment. Opacity is opacity. Material index sets a material for the segment. Minus 1 is the default material. 0 is the first one listed in the materials panel, etc. Cyclic if enabled will close the dashes. V13 is an in-depth tutorial on the dot dash modifier and the cyclic setting. Envelope. Adds an envelope of lines connected to the vertices of your stroke. Segments mode will add enveloping line strokes. Fills mode does the same but also works with fill materials and gets rid of the original stroke. Deform mode instead of adding lines deforms the original stroke trying to match the envelope shape. Spread length is how many points or vertices are skipped to create any of the envelope lines. Thickness is the thickness of the envelope lines. Strength is their opacity. Material index sets the material for the envelope lines. Minus 1 is the default material. 0 is the first one listed in the materials panel, etc. Skip segments allows you to lower the density of the envelope lines. In V14, make this procedural rose brush with the help of envelope. Length. Extends or shrinks strokes. Relative mode works based on the stroke's length. One, for example, means 100% of the original stroke's length. Absolute uses the actual length measured in space. In start and end, you decide how much to extend or shrink the start and end of your strokes. Used length is the portion of the stroke used to calculate in which direction the extension will go. Curvature, if enabled, makes the extensions curve. Point density decides how much subdivisions the new curves have. Segment influence has something to do with lessening small segments influence on the resultant curve. Filter angle ignores points deviated 
oriented more than a certain angle when calculating the curve. It may mean nothing to us normal people, but basically these two settings along with the use length setting will help you adjust and fine tune the curve and direction of your extensions. Invert, well, inverts the curves. Random offsets will randomize the start and end of the extensions using the start and end values. Random noise offset will take the resultant stroke and randomize both ends of it. Randomize will generate frames with random lengths at the intervals you set in step. Line Art Generates line art on mesh objects. This modifier has tons of settings, so I not go into much detail. What confused me most about it as a beginner is that I would try to add the modifier directly to a mesh object. But of course, you'd need a grease pencil object to add this modifier to. Usually a blank object, but not necessarily. Source type can be an object, a collection of objects, or the whole scene. You have to choose a material for the lines and the layer to draw them on. You can change the thickness and the opacity of the lines. You can change the edge types to add lines to here. Since Blender 3.2 we can even add strokes for light contour and shadows. For that you will need to add a light source in this section. Occlusion will draw inner lines if you change the level. And Vertex Weight Transfer has some settings for transferring weights from the meshes to your grease pencil object. For that you will need to add vertex groups to your grease pencil object with the exact names of the meshes groups. In V15, the developer Yiming Wu explains what Occlusion, Weight Transfer and other settings do. And V16 is a troubleshooting video for beginners tackling the issues that faced me the first time I used line art. Mirror It mirrors whatever strokes you draw, a handy tool when you have to draw symmetrical stuff. You can choose one or multiple mirroring axes and choose an object to be the mirroring center instead of the object's origin point. Multiple strokes Replaces your strokes by a, let's call it a group or array of parallel strokes. You can choose the number of strokes, the distance that seems to mean the width of the strokes group and the offset. The fade, if enabled, will allow you to fade the thickness and or opacity along the width of the strokes group. The center setting controls where to start the fading, from the center or the edges of the strokes group. Outline Traces the outline of strokes with new cyclic strokes, which means closed shapes. Thickness is that of the generated strokes. Enable and keep shape confines the generated strokes inside the original outline, trying to keep the original shape. In edit mode we can see this clearly. Subdivisions is how much they are subdivided. Sample length evens the distance between the generated vertices but increasing it lowers the outline's resolution. You can see the effect clearly if you use the dot stroke material as the outline material. The target object's placement, like this empty, will decide the generated stroke's origin or starting point. This can be visualized if we add a build modifier, scroll a little bit in the timeline and move the empty. Simplify Simplify strokes by reducing the number of points, it's done using one of the calculation modes. Let's use a dot stroke to visualize each mode in action. Fixed is the simplest mode and deletes alternating vertices. Adaptive tries to preserve the original shape, especially corners. Sample resamples the stroke with vertices at regular intervals. Sharp threshold helps preserve corners that are sharper than the angle specified. Merge merges vertices closer to each other than the distance specified here. Subdivide Subdivides your strokes by adding more points or vertices using one of two methods. Catmull Clark which smooths the curves, or Simple that keeps the original shape. Subdivisions decides the number of point divisions. Armature Works with bone armatures that can be used for rigging. Most of the time this modifier is added automatically to your grease pencil object when you parent it to an armature. Watch V17 for a basic introduction to armatures and rigging. I have also a whole grease pencil rigging playlist for beginners on this channel. Object is where you choose your armature. Add a vertex group here if you want to exclude part of your strokes from being deformed by the armature. 
bind to decides how the object will be deformed. It can be using either or both vertex groups or bone envelopes. Since this is more about rigging than modifiers, learn about these two methods and more in V17. Hook allows deforming a grease pencil object using another object that acts as the hook. If you used proportional editing before, in which moving, scaling or rotating a point affects the circular area around it, this modifier is like the non-destructive version of it. Object is where you choose the hook object. Vertex group to exclude part of your strokes from being deformed. Strength is how much influence the hook has on the strokes. Falloff controls the influence area of the hook. Radius is the distance at which the hook's influence ends. If the value is zero, it doesn't end, which means that the hook will affect all strokes equally. Type is how the influence will be attenuated the closer the strokes are to the influence ending point. If you choose curve, you can make your own curve and go crazy. Uniform falloff corrects the hook's influence if your grease pencil object is non-uniformly scaled. In V18, Open Class experiments deeply with the hook to finally make a face turn animation. Lattice works with lattices. Lattices are grids used to deform your regular or grease pencil object. You can add a lattice to your project like you add any other object. Most of the time this modifier is added automatically to your object when you parent it to a lattice. Add a vertex group here if you want to exclude part of your strokes from being deformed by the lattice. Strength decides how much deforming the lattice influences your grease pencil object. Noise A magical modifier that adds a soul to your grease pencil object. This is a very popular one and what it does is add the noise or randomness along grease pencil strokes. Position, strength and thickness randomize position, opacity and thickness. UV works with lines of type dots or squares to randomize rotation. You'll understand this better if you watch the part about the first modifier, texture mapping. Noise scale is an important setting. Increasing its value increases the noise frequency, which means you'll see more randomness in smaller areas. Areas. Noise offset moves the noise along the strokes, which if keyframed can result in cool smooth animations. Noise seed give you a different random. Randomize if enabled animates the noise and has two modes. Steps randomizes the stroke every number of frames you set here. Keyframes randomizes strokes only in the grease pencil frames you put in your timeline. Offset allows you to change the position, rotation and scale of your grease pencil strokes and to randomize them. All the settings are self-explanatory. Uniform scale is just like we saw in the fifth modifier array and explained in V10. Shrink wrap allows you to wrap your strokes around a mesh object. Target is your mesh object. Wrap method will change how your strokes are wrapped with different levels of precision. Snap mode decides where exactly to put the grease pencil object. Offset puts a distance between the two objects. Smooth factor smooths your grease pencil object and repeat repeats the smoothing. In V19, learn to use this modifier to put a 2D face on a 3D head. Smooth smooths your strokes in different ways. Position, strength, which means opacity, thickness and UV. The UV part smooths the UV rotations in lines with type dots or squares. You'll understand this better if you watch the part about the first modifier, texture mapping. Factor is how much to smooth your strokes and repeat repeats the smoothing. Keep shape if enabled smooth strokes without making them shrink. Thickness changes the thickness of your strokes. If enabled, uniform thickness resets the original stroke's thickness, which gets rid of any thickness variations. Hue saturation alters the colors of your strokes, fills or both by allowing you to change the hue, saturation and lightness of your colors. Opacity changes the opacity or hardness of your strokes. The mod can be strokes only, fills or both. Hardness mod allows you to make your strokes edges hard or soft. If enabled, uniform opacity resets the original strokes opacity, which gets rid of any opacity variations. Tint 
Unlike the hue saturation modifier which alters the object's colors, this one replaces them with the color or gradient you choose. Again, you can apply it on strokes, fills or both. The gradient mode does only radial gradients and needs a parent object like an empty as its center to work. Radius is the radius of the radial gradient of course. This is it, all the 26 grease pencil modifiers in Blender 3.4. Please like and share this video and support the free content I make here by buying something from my Gumroad. See you in another video and peace.